I was born almost at the turn of the century. I was 1924. Aguinaldo was still alive. Aglipay was alive. Lapu-Lapu was still being <laughs> talked about. That is why nobody can argue with me. I became a fisherman, I became a farmer, I became a road worker, I became a lumberjack, anything. I never wore a pair of shoes or slippers until I was 21. Ang kanyang pangalan nakatatak na sa kasaysayan pero hanggang sa kasalukuyan ang kanyang pangalan patuloy na kumikinang kahit sa edad na isang daan. <laughs> the living legend, the one and only Juan Ponce and Riles in the house! Woo! 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 Yay! Alam mo, <laughs> sinabi mo isang daan. Nalula ba kayo? Para <laughs> ako... <laughs> Naisip ko, gurang na pala ako. <laughs> <laughs> Para po sa, sa iba pong planeta, ang 100 years old ay napakabata. <laughs> Kaya yung mga tumutokso sa akin, sinasabi nila, eh, mas matanda pa raw ako kay Adan. Hindi totoo yan ako. Sapagkat ako yung nagbigay ng mansalas ah! sa ahas. <laughs> O, oh, palakpak ka naman tayo dyan. Yan ang tanong ng ilan. Talaga bang pogi si Adan? At talaga bang maganda si Eva? <laughs> Pero... Huwag ko na sabihin yung nakita ko kay Eva. Ay, nako, Sus Mario. Marami At talaga mga... At nakita ko rin kay Adan. <laughs> kayo, marami po talaga mga bagay na tanging kayo lang po. Sa totoo lang, literally, only you have witnessed. Ay, ay, ay went through a timeline of a century. A century? So, a lot of things happened within that century. I do not know your interest, but <laughs> I, will ask your, I will answer your questions. The only thing is, my eyesight is bad, my hearing is bad, so we speak a little fire and Slower. Okay. Inakala nyo ba na aabot kayo ng 100? Hindi. Wala sa isip ko yun. Akala ko hindi ko abutin ng 30 years old. Totoo po ba? Totoo yun. Hmm. Dahil sa ala, pinanggalingan kong lugar. It is really a wilderness. There were no roads. The houses were far apart. We were by the sea, by the mouth of the river, and we were ordinary fisher folks. Pero masasabi po natin na talagang galing po kayo sa hirap. Oh, totoo yun. Mm -hmm. Alam mo, naranasan ko yung hindi kumain na isang araw eh. At saka karamihan sa amin nung bata ako. Kumakain kami ng dalawang beses sa isang araw. Alas 10 at alas 4 ng hapon. In between, punta ka sa gubat, nagpitas ka ng bayabas at saka mga ibang wild fruits. Mayroon kami tinatawag na buglay, kalupit, kung ano-ano yun. Saka mga berries. Okay, mahirap po kayo, pero did you enjoy your childhood? Given the circumstances of our lives, we, we, we have to suffer it and enjoy it. There's nothing you can do about it. Opo. Pero talagang mahirap. Ang buhay ng mahirap, mahirap. Opo. Alam mo, hanggang ngayon, kaya 
malapit ang puso ko sa mahihirap sapagkat uh, doon ako galing. Kung mahirap ka, para bang wala kang kwentang tao. Naramdaman din po ninyo yun? Naramdaman ko yun. Parang alipin ang feeling mo ba? At uh, tinitingala mo yung mga pagkaganda ang damit, nakasapa, nakasinelas, nakasapatos dahil kami wala kami mga sapatos, wala kami mga tsinelas. Nakapaa? Yung talampakan namin ay magkakapal. I finished fourth grade, elementary. I was a houseboy of uh, two teachers, I staff for two years. Because my mother could not afford to go continue sending me to school. So I went back home, became a fisherman again. Then, after that, another uh, aunt, my uh, cousin of my mother, aunt, was married to the mayor of the town, Cesario Peralta. And he, they took me also as child's boy. So, I finished grade, six, grade five, grade six, and grade seven. I was a lutatorian, pero gusto kong magpumunta sa high school. So I applied for a scholarship, CVI, Cagayan Valley Institute. So I finished first year, 1940-41. 1941, June, July, I went for my second year. Not even two months passed. I was going to my class in the second floor of the building I was ambushed by four senior students. I was wounded. They st started stabbing me. They nearly hit my artery here. My hands I, all full of uh, scars. My, my stomach was lawarat. For what? Because they were robbing you? A girl, uh, Wilma Kehas <laughs> was her name. And uh, I was teaching her Ah, uh, arithmetic and algebra. So they thought that liniligawan ko yun, yun pala, interesado yung isa sa kanila. Dahil sa babae, munti kayong mapatay. How old were you then? I was uh, at the end of my 16th year. You survived it? You went direct to the hospital? Yeah. Well, anyway, I survived. I filed my case. My case was dismissed. But the worst part is, I, was, I did not provoke the incident and I was expelled from, from the school. Kayo pa na expel? So, umuyo ako sa amin, wala akong trabaho. Noong gumaling-galing na ako, I decided to apply to work in a public construc road construction. And I worked there from, I think, August. Yeah, August until November 30th of 1941. We went back from Aparri to the town of Gonzaga, where uh, I served the mayor as a houseboy. As I used to do, I went early in the morning, I went to buy bread and eggs for their breakfast across the town. I saw some soldiers with their motorcycle, four of them, parked. They were different from our soldiers. I was looking at them, and they were looking at me. I was probably the first person Filipino to, to, see, to see the Japanese. The Japanese. <laughs> I don't doubt that. <laughs> and then oh. I, I finally realized that Oh, these are the Japanese already because there was talk about war. Then all of a sudden I heard the rumble, rumble, rumbling sound. When I looked eastward, I saw a long line of trucks and tanks with motorcycles ahead of them. 
And then uh, I went back to the to my boss, to the mayor. I told him, Apo, nandito na yung mga hapon. Sabi niya, totoo, oyo. So yung, yung mga anak niya, ang, ang tiya ko, ili, dinala namin sa uh, one farther down, out of the, the, the place. And then we saw the parade of cannons and uh, all kinds of uh, wow. armaments of war the whole day. You served as a soldier also. Later on. Later on. The governor of the province of Cagayan notified the, my boss mayor that he has, he has formed an underground group to fight the, the Japanese. And uh, that is where we formed the first guerrilla organization in the country. The Cagayan was the first guerrilla organization uh, created immediately after the war. During the period from that day that we formed the guerrilla, I was in the jungle already. And uh, I, I went through the province of uh, Cagayan, through the mountain. We never passed through the road. That's why when I was Secretary of Defense, I knew where to find the New People's Army because uh, we used the same trails, the same pathways. You mentioned to me that at some point you were tortured by the Japanese. Later on, I was recruited as to join the constabulary in Apari. Then they discovered the organization, the Hunter Sarotis organization. When I was arrested, there were others, four others. There were five of us. And so, on October 10, 1944, that is, I was uh, captured by them in the uh, headquarters of the constabulary and brought to prison. And when you enter the, my, my cell, you have to crawl. You have to literally crawl. I think the entrance is about that high. That is where you do your thing. With it, you sleep on the floor, cement floor without blanket for 90 days without bath. Huh? Wow. With a ration of one bowl of rice with tahuri, fermented uh, soybeans, and uh, one, one alpine cup of water, of water mm. a day. Nung pu nagpumasok ako first day, dun sa aking kulungan, I, I could not see anything. Ah, and then I was, I put my back against the wall. And then all of a sudden I was, I heard the moan, moaning. When, when I looked, there was a, someone lying down on my, on my right side against the wall. I, I went near him. He was battered. He was a Caucasian. I later uh, learned that his name was Jose Erea. He was a uh, caught as a spy. He was totally battered. He stayed with me, sure, for two or three nights. After that, one night, they took him out for interrogation and never came back. I think two weeks, they started interrogating me. So, ano po ang ginawa sa inyo? I cannot forget him, Nakamura. Nakamura, Gunso, Sergeant Nakamura. Then afterwards, I was asking me, What's your name? Then I told him, Valentin Ponce. No, 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 what's your name? Valentin Ponce. Yes. Sampal, Sampal. <laughs> uh, who are your companions? I do not know them, I said. I only know Major uh, Liban. I go, Pagatapos. 
He was asking me about a guy named Blackburn. I don't know the one. I don't know. No, 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 no. I uh, know Blackburn. Hindi naman sa marunong English. Ganun na lang kami. Started. Paano na Los Pordos? Wow. Pagkatapos, yung pagi. Yung buntot ng pagi. <laughs> ah, ganon. Wow. That was my first interrogation. Then after that, every other day, I was interrogated. Whenever uh, after the interrogation, I literally crawl from uh, the interrogation uh, room to my cell because uh, I was became so weak until finally they applied water cure over my head, uh, over my face was a faucet of water and they opened the faucet. I could, uh, uh, pati yung ginadalawa sila, bisikleta na may dynamo, wow. it, they uh, strap you with uh, things and uh, your hands, <laughs> they like to kill you. <laughs> Ganun pala kung mamatay ka eh. Uh, you go blank. And the whole thing, you, 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 you lose your consciousness. The last part of my interrogation was, I was brought inside the room of the head of the organ organization. His name also was Nakamura. He was a major. He was giving me his pistol for me to shoot myself. Back it up. Okay. Uh, Why? He, they play. They play. Uh, play on us. I said to myself, "This guy is crazy. He will not give me this pistol if he, 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 it is loaded." So I, I click and click and click. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, asked me to kneel down and unseat the samurai sword because every, every officer had the samurai sword. And he asked me to kneel down and he raised his uh, samurai. <laughs> he, he put the blade here. I could feel it. Until today, sometimes I dream about it. Really? Na, na, natatandaan po ninyo yung yeah, all, all, ninyo. All, all, almost every detail of what happened to me. I can still remember the, those things. What was the first thing on your mind when the war ended? What did you want to do? Actually, uh, we were the last uh, part of the country that was pacified. The, the war ran all the way from uh, January all the way to about June, June, and then the, the Japanese surrendered already. I was investigated by the, they learned that I was a prisoner of uh, the Kempetai, and I was interrogated by the counterintelligence corps of the U.S. Army. Then uh, after that, I was assigned in a quartermaster depot in Apari when my half sisters uh, evacuated to Cagayan. The, my half sisters in uh, the first family of my father that I met, and uh, he looked for me and said, I, I, "You have to go with me." I said, "Where? To Manila." Why? Your father wants to see you. So it was clear in your mind after the war that you wanted to be a lawyer. I never intended to join the government. I never dreamed to wield power. It came. I served. I used it. Let the people judge it. Let history write about it if they want. Hindi po ninyo kinagisnan yung totoo po ninyong ama. Nakwento po ninyo yan sa akin minsan. 
ako nagtataka kung bakit yung aking mga darawang kapatid na matanda, ang apelyido nila ay paddayuman. At yung mga mas bata sa akin, Rapada, Ilocano o family name. Pero ako ay puragganan. Bakit, bakit ako puragganan? At iba ang mukha ko doon sa darawang kapatid ko. Hindi umiimik yung nanay ko eh. Tagal yun, na bago siya sabihin sa akin. Ayaw niya sabihin kung sino ang tatay ko eh. Para hindi mo ako kulitin na yan. Yan lang ang, ang retrato ng tatay mo. Yan. Nasa Maynila, wala rin ito. I was eager to see my father because I really wanted to go to school. So it was clear in your mind after the war that you wanted to be a lawyer. My ambition was to be an engineer. I cannot describe to you my feeling when uh, my case was dismissed. I was so angry, but I could not do anything. I was powerless. And uh, the judge dismissed my case because I did not have any lawyer. And lahat ng mga kalaban ko, mga anak ng mga members ng Board of Trustees ng Eskwela. So, ako, in a chokwera nila. Ganito pa na ang buhay ng mga mahihirap. Natatalo sa kaso? Walang kustisya. I decided to become a lawyer. And you became UP College of Law Cum Laude. <laughs> when uh, I arrived in Numanabon with my father already, he did not allow me to go back to Santa Mesa anymore. He brought me, brought me to Malabon, and that was my first time to meet uh, my sister Armida, Irma, Alfonso Jr., and uh, Armando. Uh, the, the eldest among them was uh, not there. She was living in San Juan with, the, with her, uh, her grandparents, and uh, I met her later on. So I stayed, I, I never went back to my half-sisters again. Mm -hmm. I stayed in Malabon. Mm -hmm. I became, my father taught me how to drive a jeep, and I became also a, I was a helper in the house. I called Taga Igib ng Tubig, Taga... Parin, even during law school. Mga... <laughs> I was the mechanic, I was the uh, man Friday of my father. I used to accompany him already uh, going to the courtroom because magulo nun eh. Nag-uumpisa na yung mga komunista nun na, uh, uh, mga oh, union, unionized na. And, and my father was a lawyer of uh, big companies. So I started to enjoy the life of a lawyer. One day he said, you have to go back to school. My father was very close to the Merinor sisters who were running St. James Academy in Malabon, in San Bartolome. Talked to them about me and said that my son is uh, on the first year, he's 21. Can you accelerate him and say if he can do it? So I graduated. Salutatorian in, in uh, St. James. In 1949, we were the first batch of first year to start their law schooling in the Diliman campus. UP, I was Salutatorian, I was became uh, head of the law journal, I became a, a member of the Sigma Rho. Then I reviewed for the bar, I passed the bar, I thought I would tap it. I was number 11. I started as a labor lawyer. Then my first case was a case of uh, a mining company, a Kohe mining company in uh, Zambales. Then after that, I went to Harvard. I graduated in my master's. When I came back, one day I was invited to the house of uh, Jolim Huko in Grace Park. I was a member of the Bachelor's Club and I saw this girl 
she was uh, sitting on the grass and I was attracted to her. So I approached her, but she looked at me and she, she did not mind me. Then a year later, I saw her again in Aviles Street, east of Malacanang, in the house of the Gastons. Then uh, she became more friendly to me, and that is where I started to court my wife. Unang tingin pa lang, was it love at first sight? I said, this is going to be my wife. <laughs> I married my wife, and uh, there were only 30 people in our wedding in Sampanok. I started a family, I left, I lived my, with my father. Then uh, after two months in Malabon, we transferred to our first house. It was uh, in uh, the Film Life subdivision in Quezon City. What is the best thing about Mom Christina as a wife? Well, she was pretty, very young. She was 20 years old. I was 33 years old. Mm. Colegiana, <laughs> four and four. So, ayun. What is the secret? You're still together. Husband and wife would already have some spots, you know. But, uh, we, we talk you know, things over and things are quieted down, but uh, I love my wife, so, so she loves me, so that we are married for 68 years. If you marry a woman and live with her for 68 years, that is true love. 68 years, yeah. wow! Palakpakan naman tayo, 68 <laughs> years together! Wow! What is the best thing about lawyering for you? I enjoyed uh, trial work, uh, and I, I met I met uh, the, the likes of Santa Francisco, the Jose Jocno, and uh, many of the great lawyers of Manila. I was uh, very young and I, wa I was uh, trained under stern judges. Uh, mm. uh, you cannot approach them. You enjoy winning? Yeah. I never lost the case. <laughs> Totoo po ba? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I, I did not uh, handle only. I was engaged in trial work and corporate work. I, I was a tax lawyer. One day, I was investigated by the Senate because of the Dole Pineapple Project that I organized, and then the United Fruit Pro Project that I was also organizing in the Philippines. It came to a point during the hearing of the Blue Ribbon Committee headed by Lorenzo, Senator, the late Senator Lorenzo Tanyada and the late uh, Agriculture, the late uh, Alejandro Almendras. Almendras pointed his fingers and he said, I hate, I hate Filipinos like you. He said, who are selling their country to foreigners? And I told him, Mr. Senator, he said, with due respect to you, don't point your finger to me, he said. I know you have been a guerrilla, famous guerrilla law fighter during the war. I too fought for our country. Don't point your finger at me, he said. Tinindigan ko siya, na, nagunat si Khan, si Tanyada. It's in Uspenya, yung hearing. Kailan po kayo napasok sa... Politica. That afternoon, when I had that altercation with all members, I went home. I was watching television, black and white panuni. My telephone rang. I'm the aide of the Senate President. He, 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 would, he would like to uh, see you. Sure, I said, uh, I'm, I'm uh, at home right now, but I'll dress up and go. I'll see him for, 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 forever. He wants to show, to meet me. No, 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 he wants to come to your house. So he came. My first time to meet him, the famous Ferdinand and Ranin Marcos. There will be war in our rear. 
region. China wants to dominate the world, and others do not want that. And what is the end result? We'll back out. And I worry for the young generation of this country. They're unprepared. They think life is easy. Life is going to be harder. You have to be very skillful to survive. What it takes to be a good politician and public servant. Yeah, well, Studying, as I said, yes. that meeting with President Marcos that night, yeah, I began my political career. I solved this problem. I went through the campaign for his nomination. He won. And then uh, campaign for the presidency. He won. And then uh, he became president. He wanted me to be under Secretary of Justice. It was uh, taken over by Ding Dong because it was asked by Injing Lopez from him. I said by all means to give it to him. He wanted me, all, he offered me all kinds of position. I declined because I did not really want to go to the government service until finally I went to Malacanang. He asked me to take my oath as Under Secretary of Finance. And from there, I became uh, Under Secretary of Finance and uh, Chairman of the Philippine National Bank, became uh, Insurance Commissioner, Customs Commissioner. I became Secretary of Justice. I uh, became a member of the Monetary Board. I became Chairman of the Monetary Board. <laughs> then until I ended up in National Defense, where I stayed for 16 years. So then, I got out of uh, uh, the executive office. I ran for Senate in 1987, and I stayed there uh, uh, except for uh, three years when I became congressman uh, during the time of Cory. And then uh, I retired from uh, the Senate in, 19, in 2016. And from there on, I, uh, I decided to study, and I studied. I studied to, I studied geopolitics, demographics, geography, um, pa, all kinds of things. And now my current uh, subject is currency. What is going to happen with the economy of the world? in the 21st century. Ilan pong libro ang binabasa ninyo in a month? Uh, at maybe? least I finish about three to four books in a month. Wow. Yeah. And tuloy-tuloy pa rin. But why is it so important for you yeah. to keep learning? Oh, oh, yeah. I have nothing better to do. So I, I, I better keep my, myself busy and I get bored if I, I'm, I'm not uh, using my time. That is one thing I learned. What, uh, from, uh, from life. Time is very precious. It has to be spent uh, for the better. And uh, that's why when I ran for the Senate in 1971, my slogan is Action Agad. And then uh, later on, Gusto Ko Happy Ka. <laughs> and Tumatak talaga yun sa and tao. Then oh, yes. I, Throughout this inter, inter period, I participated in the declaration of martial law. I participated in the impeachment of Corona, just Chief Justice Corona. I participated in the impeachment of Arab Estrada, and so forth and so on. And that's history. And now, I, I was hired again by the president. I thought my job will only be limited to legal work. I'm now involved. In fact, this morning I was uh, in the Paris. I attended two, two meetings uh, of the cabinet. I'll, you had an opinion when I asked you one time. Ano po ang uh, inyong opinion na nakabalik po talaga sa pwesto uh, ang mga Marcos? Uh, wala naman. Uh, it was offered to me by the president. And, uh, uh, since I'm not doing anything, I said, of course, if he wants my, uh, my, uh, me in his cabinet, I will be uh, 
happy to serve him. So I said, one peso a year, man, but you, in, they insisted to pay my salary, so I, I, I am uh, being paid the salary. Many of the things said about Marcos was, uh, were not true. Well, were not true. I went through his financial statements before he, uh, I filed the certificate of candidacy. Marcos was not a poor man, he was rich. How many people would have 20 million uh, pesos in those days? I remember you telling me that yeah. in history, you see heroes today become villains, become heroes again. Yeah, that's correct. And, um, I think eventually Marcos will uh, be justified by historians if they, when uh, passions of politics and envy and so, so forth and so on and greed of other people uh, get dissipated. Ano po ang inyong opinion tungkol sa People's Initiative? Why not? Why not if it's needed by the people? These things are not written in the Constitution as a decoration. They have to be used for the good of the people if needed in their time and under the circumstances where they find them. As long as it's done properly and for a, a, a real purpose for the people, why not? The, the, the Constitution is not perfect. It's has many defects. And it is impeding our uh, progress. I, I am not biased because I'm in the, the, in the government. What do you think is your primary role now as presidential legal advisor to... To make the president the best president ever this country had. And if I can, if I can. Yes. Uh, yes. To make him a real president. And I think, in my own estimate, I may, I may be wrong, he will, he will be. He's quiet, but that's the, this morning, he, 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 uh, well, he was asking the, the right questions. What is the, the few things at the top of your head that this country needs? You need a leader, quiet leader, but wise leader, hardworking leader, not a braggart, not a killer, but a doer. A one with a vision to accomplish something, not for himself, but for his people. Every, every government in the world, even Macron, even Putin, even Zelensky, even Xi Jinping, all of them, even Biden, they're all charged with corruption of one thing or another. Much of, many of these things are made up by people who do not know the real facts. I am willing to debate with anybody who wants to de debate it. Tell me the, the, the time and place, and I'll take, I'll take you on. What is the secret to your relevance, that people still want to hear you talk uh, and listen to your opinions? Because I never do things with frivolity. I, I study whatever I do. I study whatever I advise the president to the best of my ability. I'm not saying that I'm infallible or uh, I know everything, but I reduce the margin of error by studying. I'm not that a bright person, but I am industrious enough to study and understand what I have studied. I go to a book, through a book once, twice, or three times or four times in order to understand what the author is saying. Sa generasyon po ngayon, ano, ano po ang ipinag-aalala ninyo tungkol sa bayan? Ah. Uh, what are you most concerned about or worried about this country and this to write generation? This, to write the things that must be written, especially for those who have no capacity or ability to defend themselves. I have been the object of injustice. I know what it is. I came from the lowest rank of the, of the, of the society. It is a surprise that I, I made it at this time in my life with what you see. I never expected that I'll be anything 
I just thought that I will just be a caminero, fisherman, a farmer. But life is unpredictable. You have no control over it. Even your uh, life, you can live long, you can live short. Even children die. All people like me survive. Who knows? Maybe today, tomorrow, I might. Like what the poet said, were it, were it not for it is to spin the thread of present life away to win what? For ourselves or not, if we shall breathe out the very breath we now breathe in. I end my case. Do you still want to do some things? Do yeah. you want to if, see something oh, happen? If I, if, if I can... Uh, if I have my way, I would like this country to be very strong to fight China. To be frank about it, China is not going to be our friend. So you want a, a strong defense for this country? Yes. Nobody will defend this country except you and all of us. The Chinese will not defend us. They will try to take us over and make a Xinjiang and Inner Mongolia a Tibet, a Siberia for, uh, for themselves. But do you think the Philippines is now in a better place than before, say 30 years yes, ago? Yes, yes. How? Well, definitely. Yes. It is not the work of everyone. Each leader that we elect does something for the country and little by little all of that is contributed to the growth and progress of the country. But there are also people who become barriers or Malakid to the progress of the na nation. And that's why we, we are left behind. If they did not destroy what Marcos did, maybe they will be the first one to have an atomic bomb so that they, they, they could not push us around. I cannot give them any advice. Each one will find his way in this world by himself. No two persons are the same. Even my daughter is not the same as me. Her brain is better than mine. She was better educated. And sometimes she teaches me about people. Is longevity something yeah. really that you aspire well, for? Well, first of all, it is God's will. Second, it is the way you live. If you kill yourself running after material things, you'll die. Look at all the lawyers, they die young. Yeah. Even businessmen live moderately, aspire as much as you want, but put a limit to your desires, to your ambition to your goals. You cannot own the world. And you must have children who will love you like my daughter. That's so important. Special mention. <laughs> Katrina. She, she's going to be my successor. Jack, Jack is no, no, no politician. Oh, wow. So you, you're okay that Katrina yeah. follows in your footsteps? She's bet doing better. She has, uh, she has a better beginning. Mm. Tinatanong ng marami, ano po daw ang sikreto ninyo, maliban sa uh, mga bagay na binanggit nyo, sa pagkain po ba, kahit na ano pwede nyo kainin? A ako may healing. Sa healing ng lahat ng mga lalaki. <laughs> <laughs> ano po yun, hamburger? <laughs> my, my favorite song oh. is To All the Girls I Loved Before. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> yun ang pa, yun pala kaya ang kinis ng mukha ninyo. Nagtataka po ang iba. Marami po ba kayong pinapahid sa mukha ninyo? Alam mo, kailangan ang tao, yung, yung, yung utak mo, kagaya ng muscles mo yan. You have to exercise it every day. And that is why I have memorized the longest poem 
there is in literature Rubaiyat. Have you, you remember Rubaiyat? Not as well as you do. <laughs> Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam. Uh, you're the only one, according to Katrina, you're the only one who knows that. <laughs> 110 stanzas. Each stanza is four lines, 440 lines. I can recite it forward and backward. One hundred. I'm, I'm not bragging, I'm not mm. bragging. I'm, you ask me, I answer you. No, you are an inspiration. Huh? You are inspiration. You are iconic. Did you know uh, that, that you are iconic? You ask me the, my secret. The, maybe that is my secret. My mind is active. Even uh, at night, as if I'm reading a book. I no, dream. No, ba? Yeah. So, hindi kayo nanonood ng Korean teleserye? No. Okay. I, I do not waste my time with, uh, with movies. With Netflix? I, I, I enjoy watching sometimes. I watch the news. I see what, what, what the drop in the, the economy of China means to the country, or a war between Zelensky and Putin, or between Netanyahu and Yahya uh, uh, Sinwar. But you mind um, social media? Huh? You are now the star of social media. 100 years old. So 1924 said, to 2024. They said, uh, uh, I, I was older than Noah. <laughs> <laughs> Did we miss out on any animal? I, I lived during the time of the, the dinosaurs. You don't mind it. Pag nababasa po ninyo, tinatawanan ko na sila. Sabi ko nga sa kanila, Mali kayo eh. Ako ang nagbigay ng pamansanas kay Eva. Kaya na, nasindak si Adan. O, oh, huwag ka tapos na kayo. Ay, naked pala ako. Naked pala si Eva. Ay! <laughs> Wala po kayong cellphone. Wala kayong cellphone. Wala akong cellphone. Hindi ka ako marunong mag-dial. Really? <laughs> Do you have any regrets in your life? Oh, yeah. I regret that my daughter, and, uh, I was so protective of her and I did not want her to leave me and go abroad. Oh, okay. But maybe, in, in a sense, maybe it's good that uh, I restricted her and now she, can, she has become resilient. She, she, she can take care of, of, of herself. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. When you come from my beginning, Early on, you develop self-confidence because you have, to, you have to survive. And to survive, you must use your head, use your all kinds of things. You do not have to learn these things from books. You learn it by experience. Exactly. Kaya hindi po kayo maiisahan sa nangino man dahil sa pinagdaanan po ninyo. Ay, subukan lang nila. <laughs> Walang gustong sumubok. <laughs> so, Ano po ang gusto ba ninyong maalala tungkol sa inyo? Bilang just, contribution po ninyo just, sa bayan. Just, re just remember my name and you spell it well. That's all. <laughs> and there is only one Juan Ponce Enrile. Yeah, I think so. Maybe there, maybe there are many out there. Only just like where I started, they were unknown. Many Filipinos are brilliant people. We, we have the talent, only we do not cultivate them. We always believe in Singapore, Europe, America, and everything. But what about Filipino? Filipino bring. So many Filipinos look up to you because of your accomplishment, your um, you're being so prolific, contributory, and because of your longevity, they don't know what the secret is. Ano po ang gusto niyong sabihin sa mga Pilipino? Kayo po isang daang taong gulang na, nakilala Basta, pa nga niyo si Emilio Aguinaldo. Ako, ako, sa totoo lang, ibinibilang ko yung sarili ko na parang isang kahoy, isang sanga, 
itinapon mo sa ilog, hindi mo alam kung saan ka nadalhin. Kung minsan mababara ka, kung minsan nadalhin ka ng agos, kung minsan you go through a rough place, kung minsan makalmada. Ganun lang buhay ang buhay. There is never a peaceful, never an easy life. Even having money is hard. You are always thinking it will you you will lose it. You yes you strive you strive you strive. By the time you wake up, you are old. You cannot walk like me. Nadiretso pa at napakabilis pa maglakad. So ang sila sabi po niyo is to. Then there is one thing more. Pag sinabi sa akin ng isang 90 years old, nakaya pa niya, sasabihin ko, hindi totoo yan eh. Naglalasin ka yata. You're joking. So ito po ay nako, Juan Ponce and Rile. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Thank you, thank you. From, thank you from a centenarian. Make a wish, Muna. Make a wish. Ano po ang wish ninyo? And then blow. I, I wish our country will always remain free, progressive, peaceful, and safe. Kayang-kayang pa! Kayang-kayang <coughs> pa!